while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table. A woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, Seaside. It's good to to speak to you this morning, uh, just to share a little thought with you. I uh, hope all of you are doing well. It's great to hear good reports as the phone calls are being made, and and so many people are maintaining contact with so many folks in the church. I'm very excited about what I see happening in the life of our congregation. It's indeed a wonderful congregation to be a part of. It's an honor for me to be named among you at this time. I um, I was thinking as I was reading our Mark reading for today, um, along the the thought process of of change. Boy, if we've ever been in a time of change, it's been now, hasn't it? What what an interesting time we're in. Um, it's hard to predict what that every new day is going to bring. Uh, we've all had to um, refer to a different way of thinking and a different way of doing things. I once uh, heard a man use the words, uh, we are called to be adaptive leaders. Well, boy, if, we, um, if we're not adapting this day and time, we're getting left behind. And then I was reading our text and I thought, boy, this, this, uh, this Passover was all about change. Um, there had never been a Passover like this Passover. It was going to lead to the crucifixion of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. The disciples were going to be uh, on a, a roller coaster of emotions. First, a triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which we will celebrate in different kinds of ways this Sunday. And then the Holy Week and the betrayal and the crucifixion and the resurrection and the ascension and so on. This Passover was to be unlike any they had ever experienced. And then we get to the story of the woman who came into the home of Simon the leper, obviously one who had been healed by Jesus. The Simon had, had been a leper. He's identified as a leper, but obviously he was not maintaining social distancing uh, as it pertained to his illness in his day. So he obviously was one who had been healed, and the folks had gathered in. So this was a time of change for Simon. And it was a time of change for those who gathered around. And in the midst of all of that, this woman, who many have identified as Mary, some not really sure which Mary, but most, um, most scholars would relate uh, her connection to Jesus through Lazarus, who may well have been Simon Lazarus, the leper. And this Mary may have well have been his sister and the sister of Martha. 
according to church tradition, that's one of the ways that uh, this woman is identified. And she came to Jesus and she did a very unusual thing. She took a, a jar, an alabaster jar, and she poured the perfume on Jesus' head. But her action was really, really more than just pouring the, the perfume on Jesus' head. If you notice in the text, it didn't say that she opened the jar and poured the perfume. It says that she broke the jar and poured the perfume. Seems a little strange, doesn't it? Uh, we, we might very well look at that and think, well, why didn't she just open the jar and pour out the perfume? She could reuse the jar. An alabaster jar was certainly worth something. But she broke the jar, meaning that it would never be used again. You see, one of the things that this text illustrates is what making a drastic change to follow Jesus involves. Some have said that this is Mary, the same woman who was caught uh, in adultery and brought before Jesus. You remember the text where the woman was brought to Jesus and the elders came to Jesus and said, Now, Master, in his law, Moses said that such women as this should be stoned to death, for she was caught in the very act of adultery. It's in that exchange that Jesus was able to say to the elders, He who is without sin be the first to cast the stone. And the scripture says that starting with the eldest down to the least, they all dropped their stones and walked away. And when it was all over with, the woman stood and faced Jesus, and he said to her, Woman, where are your accusers? She said, There are none here. And he said to her, Go and sin no more. Some have suggested that this is the same woman uh, in this story that was in that story. If that's the case, then... You could make the case that this Mary was a woman who had made a living as a prostitute and that the perfume that she held was the um, tool of her trade, that wearing that expensive perfume was a, uh, an allurement to men. And so um, her breaking the jar and pouring out the ointment. One of two things was happening. She gave to Jesus the most expensive thing she had, the thing that in her mind was worth more than anything else as a possession. And then she gave to Jesus the most valuable thing that she had, which was her life turning her back on the way she had lived and following where Jesus was leading her to go. It leads me to a question. In this strange time, in this time where there are many concerns that are on our hearts and minds and we, we think of so many circumstances we hear and read about stories that trouble us. I wonder, in this strange time, what are you willing to change? What are you willing to break from your past so that you can focus on where Jesus is leading you? It could be that the most valuable thing any of us have to offer to Jesus, we still cling to, and that is ourselves. Well, on this um, 31st day of March, I invite you to think about that. How this, this season, 
moving toward Holy Week could be a season of complete and total change. And in it, we might discover more about ourselves and more about who Jesus is calling us to be. Well, I thought I'd close our little moment of meditation today a little bit differently than I've been doing lately. I, I want to pray for those who are on the front lines of this COVID-19, the healthcare professionals and the first responders and you know, those people who are out there working to try to keep the rest of us safe. So I, I want to lead us in prayer as we close out today. And, and I thank you for the time that we are able to spend together, even though we are separate one from another. Let's pray together, okay? Oh, Lord God, we are grateful that you call us forth, even in a time of change, in a strange and unparalleled time in our lives, a time when it seems that we are surrounded more by, by mystery and we have so many things we don't understand. I pray, Lord, that you would be present with those who, in a very literal sense, are in harm's way. We've heard this virus referred to as an enemy. We've heard the description that we are at war. Um, we know how the forces of evil continue to work in this world. And we know that there are those, Lord, who have stepped up and are standing in the gap, uh, seeking to bring hope and healing to those who are in difficult places. We pray for those, Lord, who are in the hospitals, for the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, all of the people who have volunteered and who are engaged in active ways to provide help and wholeness for those whose lives are fractured in one way or another. We pray for those, Lord, who have lost loved ones and those who live in fear. And we pray, dear God, that you would just send your sweet spirit upon us all. And where there seems to be more fear than anything else, we pray, dear God, that you would dispel the fear, strengthen our faith, and help us to experience the change that the resurrected Christ brings, even in a difficult time like this. We pray for courage, Lord that in these moments of reflection, we might be able to surrender those parts of our lives that continue to stand in the way, those parts of our lives that we cling to from the past. And we ask, dear God, that you would just pour your spirit out upon us, that we could break open the jars that contain those things and turn our past over to you. Give us uh, an awareness of your presence as you call us to simply follow you. In these things we pray in the blessed and holy name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. I trust that you are having a good day, and I look forward to our next time together. Go in peace, and God bless.